In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get edit and export from Audacity so then you can import these other files into UE5 so you can use them. And we're going to focus how to do a single sound effect and then I'm going to show you how to loop a sound ambience so that way you can do both and use them both inside UE5. Now this tutorial will entirely focus on how to actually get edit and export these sounds and then import them to UE5. And then in another tutorial, I'll show you how to actually use them in UE5. So let's begin. First, let me show you where you can get custom sound effects. Of course, you can just go to Google or another search engine and type in public domain sound effects and find the website that has public domain royalty free sound effects for you to download and use. The two sites that I've used before are Pixabay. This is a great site that has images, that has music, as well as sound effects. And another one is freesound.org. But feel free to find your own. Then go ahead and search for any sound effect that you are looking for. And I already have two downloaded that we're going to go through with this tutorial. But basically find the sound that you want. Many of these sounds are going to be mp3 files. So you are going to need to convert your mp3 files to a WAV file. Unreal Engine 5 supports import of WAV files, not mp3 files or any other audio file. It has to be a WAV file. So once you have a sound effect downloaded that you're going to use, then you need to convert it. And for this conversion, as well as editing individual audio files, uh, when we get to the looping stage, you need some kind of an audio editing software. And one of the best ones out there that is free is Audacity. And that's the one we're going to use with this tutorial. So make sure you have your audio file that you want. And now we need to convert it using Audacity to a WAV file format. So here I have Audacity open. And here are the two sound files we're going to convert. The first one and the simplest one we're going to use is just a simple sound effect, a telephone ringing for a set amount of time. In this case, it is a full minute. Basically, we're just going to take this entire file, convert it to a WAV file because this is an MP3 file and it won't work. We're going to convert it and then we're going to import it into UE5. We're not going to edit the sound down at all. And this is going to be the simplest method first. So let's go ahead and listen to it. It basically runs on loop for 57 seconds. The second file is an ambient sound. This is going to loop inside an environment in a certain space that you would want over and over again forever when you enter that space. And this is the one we're going to need to add it a little bit in order to make it loopable so there is no pauses or sudden clicks or shifts when it loops over to the beginning one that reaches the end. So let's go ahead and listen to this one for just a few seconds. So it's just a room tone. And again, you can find an ambient sound that has a lot more sounds within it. Maybe distance of people talking, maybe traffic. It doesn't really matter as long as it's an ambient sound that needs to be played on a loop forever or for as long as you are in that environment. So let's go ahead and open up that telephone ringing. Uh, we're going to go to file and you can either choose open or import and then choose audio. It doesn't really matter, both of them will work. Uh, in this case, I'll just go to file, import, audio, and just navigate into the folder where you have your audio files. And I'm gonna choose the telephone ring and click open. Now, if you've never used Audacity before, I'll just uh, talk you through and give you the step-by-step. -step. There's nothing much to it. Uh, you can go as deep as you want, but in this tutorial, we're just gonna cover the simplest basics so you can have a sound, you can edit it down and export it without actually ever using Audacity. So in order to play whatever you are, import whatever file you imported, you can use these play icons right here. Pause, play, stop. Or you can press the space bar. And then press the space bar again to stop it, or again, just use any of these icons to pause or stop. If you need to lower the volume of certain audio clips, uh, this one is a little too loud, you could do this inside UE5, but if you needed to do it in Audacity, you have controls over here, and you can adjust the gain. So you can go ahead and lower this, let's say, negative 5, play it again. It's going to be a little lower in uh, audio, in volume. Then let's go ahead and export this. Let's go to File and you simply choose export as WAV file. It's going to take the entire timeline and export it. And let's go ahead and uh, just rename it. It's going to export as a signed 16-bit. This is what we want, 16-bit file. And I'm just going to remove the numbers. 
uh, but you can rename it to anything you want. Let's do telephone ring and click save. And we're not going to edit any uh, data, just click OK. And that's it, you've exported as a WAV file. And very quickly, you may want to listen to this WAV file just so you know it exported it. Just uh, go ahead and navigate to it and double click to open it to listen to it. Done. So this is the file you would import into UEFI, which we'll do later on once we have our ambient sound done and edited as well. Now let's go ahead and deal with the loop and ambience, the background noise sound. Let's import it. Let's go to File, Import, Audio, and I'm going to choose this room tone. So let's cover a bit of navigation inside Audacity. So if you want to zoom in on your timeline, if you hold down Control and use the mouse wheel forward and back, it will zoom you in and zoom you out. You can press Control A to select the entire timeline, and if you have multiple clips, it will select them all. If you left click off of it, it will deselect the timeline, the audio clip you imported. You can also double click on this audio clip to select it. Right here at the very top, you have a few controls. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can fit selection to width, so it'll just fill the entire timeline on your screen. And at the moment, we are using this selection tool. So I can go ahead and press play, we'll be able to listen to the sound. Let's increase the volume just a bit, maybe by up to three. Now let's go ahead and loop the sound. So many sounds you download may already be looped, but many will not be. And the way you could test this is, let's go ahead and get to the very end of this timeline. So I'm gonna position my playhead right here. Once you start clicking on it, it'll start to play. Now when it gets to the end, it will not loop it'll stop. So what we need to do is we need to have this playhead, when it reaches the end, start at the beginning right away. And to do this inside Audacity, you can click on this icon right here to loop, to turn this on and off. Or we can come over here on this timeline at the very top, and if you right click, it'll give you options for looping. This is your looping timeline. So you can define starting point and an ending point where the loop begins and ends. So go ahead and make sure this loop on and off is turned on. And you can see this timeline at the very top turned into a different color. Now you have brackets, little holders that you can control where the sound will begin and where the sound will end. And this is where it will stop and then start at the very beginning. So it'll end here and start at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and click just in the last few seconds and you'll see it'll just start. And once you click on it and you'll hear the sound play, it'll then skip right to the beginning and you should not hear any clicks, any pauses in this loop. If you do, that means you need to trim the timeline, trim this audio and remove any clicks, any pauses within your audio. So let's go ahead and hear what this looping sound will sound like at the moment. So you heard right there, there was a stop, a small little pause and we need to remove that. And the way you do that is you need to go ahead and control this loop where it ends. So let's go ahead and drag it slightly back. And let's go to the beginning and drag this so uh, it removes that little pause. If you need to zoom in so you can see the wave, the actual time, and this kind of representation of your audio, let's go ahead and zoom in closer so you can see there is a dot, that pause right there. So we actually want to remove that. So this at the very top controls where it will start. So let's go ahead and just, uh, so we have uh, some information on the audio. And at the very end, let's go ahead and remove that. We already removed it because we moved this timeline away from it. So if I click right over here, let me zoom out a little bit. If I click over here, we'll be able to hear what that transition from end to beginning will sound like now. There was a slight pause, a little slight click. Let me try it again. A little slight click right at the uh, right when it switches. So let's go ahead and remove that again. I'm gonna zoom in at the beginning, and you just need to go ahead and do this on your audio until you can just play and not hear anything, any pauses or any clicks. And you may have to do this in the beginning. You may have to do this at the end. Maybe both. And sometimes, depending on the audio clip, you may actually have to drag this uh, towards. Uh, so there's a seamless transition. Let's try this again. Right there, that was a lot more seamless. There was not uh, that little uh, click that's happening. I can hear a little sound in the background. 
So I may want I may want to remove that. So let me go ahead and actually remove that and just play it again. That was a lot smoother. So you basically tweak this until you get it just right and you should hear seamless transition. Next, once you've defined the loop and you have that seamless transition, now we need to cut these little pieces off. So if you take your cursor and you move your cursor right to the end or to the start, you'll see a yellow line pop up. This line is actually controlled and snap into the looping region right here at the very end. So what you need to do is you need to position your mouse, left click, it'll place a cursor right there, a little mark, and then you need to hover over it again until you see the yellow with a little hand showing up, right click, and choose split clip. Then now, this is an individual clip that you can double click. And uh, I'm gonna leave it for now, but we're gonna delete it. Now let's go to the beginning, and uh, we're gonna do the same thing to the very beginning. I'm gonna hover over to let's see the yellow line, left click, to place a cursor, the line, and then I'm gonna right click on it, and choose split clip. So now we have the main timeline, which is seamless, and the two discarded pieces at the start and the end. Let's go ahead and delete them. I'm gonna double click on it, so it selects it, and then hit delete. And also do the same thing for the beginning, hit delete. We could also click on this icon right here, trim audio outside selection. This will also do this, and will remove the beginning and the end, but I like doing it manually, because this way allows me to drag this timeline and just snap it to the very beginning right there. So let me show you again, I'm gonna zoom in a little closer and just take this entire timeline and it needs to be snapped to the 0, 0.0 timeline. Because if you don't, you'll have a dead gap right here when you export. So you need to go ahead and drag it until it snaps right there. This timeline right here, we no longer need to loop. So we can go ahead and right click and clear loop. All this does is just defines the region where the looping happens. But when you export, the entire timeline audio clip gets exported, not what you define as a loop. That's just for Audacity. Now we can go ahead and test this one more time before we export. I'm gonna select the clip, double click on it, go back up to the looped region section, right click and choose set loop to selection. All this does is it sets a loop at the beginning and the end. So that way we can test it and see if we actually it's looping seamlessly. So I'm gonna left click right here, right at the end and just listen for it. That was seamless, so that's exactly what I want. This is what you would want in your background noise audio. A seamless transition, if you close your eyes, you won't even know where it uh, ended and where it started again. So now we don't need to clear this, we can go ahead and export it. But while we're here, let's go ahead and actually clear this. I'm gonna right click back on that timeline, on the looping timeline and then clear loop. Now we need to export this audio clip as a WAV file. Let's go to file, export as WAV, choose a new name, Make sure you have wave selected. It's going to be 16 bit. Let's uh, let's do this as a room tone and choose save. And let's do a test. Here's the room tone we exported. I'm going to double click on it and just move the slider to the very end so we can see the loop happening in an audio player. Let me pause it. I'm going to enable this loop right here, depending on what you're listening into, you, uh, you, you'll have another option. So I'm gonna enable loop here and then put my playhead uh, just uh, so it's at the very end so we can listen to it to the end and the beginning again. Here you go, seamless transition. So now we have two WAV files that we need to import into UE5. So I have this folder open and I'm simply going to take the two WAV files and drag them into Content Browser so pick a folder where you would want these sounds to be imported into and saved. So I'll just simply choose a folder and let's do the first one. I'm gonna just drag the telephone WAV file. Left click, hold and drag, give it a second and now it's imported. Let's do the same thing for the room tone. And now these two WAV files have been imported. You can go ahead and listen to them right here inside the content browser. Just click play. And let's listen to the other one. So now you have two files imported that you edited, converted, and exported from Audacity and imported them into UE5. Now in the next tutorial, I will actually show you how to use these files, these audio files, inside your level. Because although you could use these WAV files by themselves, it's recommended that you create a sound cue from them and then use the sound cue files inside your level instead of the WAV files. And we'll cover all that and more in the next tutorial.
Now, if you are serious about learning and using Unreal Engine 5, I have an extensive beginner tutorial course, UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, that will take you through all the steps on how to start using Unreal Engine 5 for environment creation. It includes how to get started, how to use static meshes, how to create environments with them, how to light, and an extensive module on how to use the modeling mode so you can model right inside UE5. And then you can take the next step with UE5 The Retro Office Project, which will show you how to create and light interior environments from start to finish entirely in UE5 in only 9 hours. I give you a set of static meshes to use, we'll use them to create the environment, to light it, post-process it, and create a final environment from it. Both of these tutorial courses are now available, and they'll be listed in the link description below, or you can get them right on the website, there'll be a link there as well. So I'll see you in the course.